Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing our Let's Talk Lore series, covering the Nanmai Expedition, with episode 2 titled Zhuge Liang the Trickster. So, last episode, we left off with Zhuge Liang's main force marching south, and facing him are the combined forces of the three surrendered administrators in Yongkai, Gao Ding, and Zhu Bao, each with around 50,000 to 60,000 men. And when the two forces met, the three administrators set up separate camps with Yongkai's forces on the left flank, Gao Ding's forces in the center, and Zhu Bao's forces far on the right flank. And since Gao Ding was in charge of the more symbolic central force, he summoned his best generals in E Huan, who was this six foot tall giant of a man with strength that is said to match the legendary Lu Bu. And very much like Lu Bu, E Huan favored a sky piercer as his weapon. And with a very small vanguard force, E Huan marched out of camp to face the Shu Han forces in their first conflict. From Zhuge Liang's side, Wei Yan took charge of the vanguard forces and marched out to duel E Huan. These two generals went at it for a short while before Wei Yan feigned defeat and sounded the retreat. As Wei Yan's men ran back toward their camp, Le Huan, now a bit arrogant from his first taste of success, ordered his men to give chase in an effort to cut off Wei Yan's escape. But even before Le Huan's forces could catch up, battle horns sounded from the forest surrounding the roads, and from the left came Wang Ping's forces, and from the right came Zhang Yi's forces. It turns out these two lieutenants have been lying in wait this whole time. And unable to turn his vanguard forces around in time, Le Huan found him surrounded on three sides now that Wei Yan had also turned his force around to charge at them. And despite his best efforts to break out, Le Huan was captured alive along with most of his men and brought back to Zhuge Liang's tent for questioning. Inside Zhuge Liang's commander's tent, Le Huan was untied and given food and wine as Zhuge Liang sat down to chat with him. Zhuge Liang asked him, Whose unit did he belong to? And E Huan answered, Gao Ding. Zhuge Liang nods and tells him that he among with his men will all be released back to Gao Ding, and that the emperor knows that Gao Ding is an honorable man and is now forced to surrender to these rebels given the dire situation in the south. So should he decide to lay down his arms and rejoin the kingdom now, all will be forgiven. Le Huan finishes his wine and thanks the prime minister and took his captured men back to camp where he relayed the message to Gao Ding, who pondered over this news all night. The very next day, hearing that the vanguard forces were defeated, Yong Kai marched his own force to help out the central camp, only to see that Le Huan is actually in camp. So he asked Gao Ding, how did Le Huan come back after being captured? Gao Ding tells Yong Kai, that Zhuge Liang had released him as of all the branch to their forces. And Yong Kai, being the first administrator to join the rebel forces, scoffed at the idea of a possible peaceful return to the kingdom after all they have done, and told Gao Ding that this was a simple ploy by Zhuge Liang to create division among the three of them, and the best course of action is actually to attack. So he took the 30,000 men he brought with him and rode out towards the Shu Han camp. Once there, Wei Yan once again came out for a good fight, but this time Yong Kai was no match for Wei Yan as he was soundly defeated in a duel and had to flee back to camp after taking heavy casualties in the retreat. Unsatisfied, Yong Kai rallied his entire camp the next day and set out to challenge the Shu Han army again. But this time, no one rode out to answer as the gates remained shut and without siege weapons to assault the camp, Yong Kai rode back. And for the next three days, Yong Kai will repeatedly come and challenge the Shu Han camp, but with the same results as the gates remain shut. Thinking that there may be some eternal issues within the Shu Han camp, Yong Kai rode over once again to Gao Ding's camp and asked him to come to a night raid with him. Agreeing that Yong Kai's assessment on the situation might be true, Gao Ding agrees as they decide to set out for a raid that night. In their mind, the best case scenario is that somehow the Shu Han army had retreated due to a possible attack from the north by the Wei kingdom, or and even if that was not the case, 
At the very worst, they can at least figure out why the Shu Han forces are not coming out by raiding them that night. But unfortunately, neither of them got any glimpse of the Shu Han camp, as Wei Yan's forces had actually been ambushing all this time on the roads toward the camp and sprung the ambush upon the two unsuspecting victims. Both Yong Kai and Gao Ding managed to escape in the chaos of the night, but many of their men were slaughtered or captured and brought back to Shu Han's camp, where Yong Kai's men were kept separately and away from Gao Ding's men. And as these prisoners of war lie there all tied up, they could hear whispers among the guards inside the camp that claimed that all of Gao Ding's men were going to be pardoned and released, while Yong Kai's men were going to be executed. So later that night, when Zhuge Liang came out to meet the prisoners, he first approached Yong Kai's group and asked them who their commander was. And all the men answered, Gao Ding. So Zhuge Liang commanded the guards to untie them, feed them with food and wine, before releasing them back to camp. After this group was released, Zhuge Liang then went to the other side of the camp where Gao Ding's men were kept and asked them who their commander was. And all these men answered that they were actually Gao Ding's men. Zhuge Liang nods and also unties them, feed them with food and wine, but before releasing them, he explained to them why he had planned on executing Yong Kai's men in the first place. He tells them that actually, Yong Kai had been secretly offering surrender to the Shu Han forces, and the ambush that night that they suffered was actually his handiwork, and that Yong Kai had also promised to assassinate both Gao Ding and Zhu Bao, and use their heads as presents to confirm that he is truly surrendering. And since Shu Han believes in honor and mercy, Zhuge Liang believes that Yong Kai's methods are too devious and cruel, so he has not yet accepted Yong Kai's surrender, and he wants Gao Ding's men to go back to Gao Ding and inform their commander of Yong Kai's devious ways and be careful, and that he would much rather welcome back an honorable man like Gao Ding into the kingdom than a devious one like Yong Kai. Then Zhuge Liang released these prisoners back to camp as well, and once back, they inform Gao Ding of everything that has happened, and Gao Ding who is still kind of unsure what to do, decided to send out two scouts, one to Yong Kai's camp to spy to see if that he is indeed planning to backstab him, and another one to Zhuge Liang's camp to see if Zhuge Liang has been truthful in his explanation. And at Yong Kai's camp, the scout managed to sneak in and heard a bunch of men praising Zhuge Liang and expressing their desire for surrender. Little did he know, these were the prisoners that Zhuge Liang had released earlier that night and they had just basically acquired a fondness for Zhuge Liang. Now the scout believes that this means that Yong Kai's men were actually plotting to surrender already. And on Zhuge Liang's camp, the scout that went there was actually captured and brought into Zhuge Liang's camp. And even though Zhuge Liang clearly knew this scout was from Golding's camp, he pretended that this was actually Yong Kai's scout and scolded at him, asking why his commander Yong Kai is so slow and delivering the head of Gao Ding and Zhu Bao, as promised in their letters. Then he gives him a sealed letter and asks him to bring it back to Yong Kai and tells him to hurry up to deliver his promise. Once released, this scout quickly returned to Gao Ding and handed him the sealed letter. Inside this letter, Zhuge Liang documents Yong Kai's promise to kill Gao Ding and Zhu Bao in his surrender and promises Yong Kai a massive reward should he deliver on this promise. Enraged and completely tricked by Zhuge Liang at this point, Gao Ding summons E Huan, who already kind of wants to surrender Zhuge Liang in the first place following his own capture and release, and tells him of this treachery that Yong Kai has been plotting for them. E Huan thought it over and offered a very cautious plan for Gao Ding to help confirm if this whole situation is real or not. He said they should host a feast in their camp tomorrow and ask Yong Kai to come over for it. If Yong Kai comes, then he should be innocent, as he has nothing to fear. But if he refuses the invitation, then he must be plotting to kill them and is afraid to come to their camp alone. Gao Ding agrees and sends a messenger over to Yong Kai's camp right away. Yong Kai at this time, however, was worried about the exact same thing in his camp, as the stories from his men that were released made him think that Gao Ding had actually already made up his mind to surrender, and that the ambush they suffered that night was all Gao Ding's doing. 
So when this invitation arrived for the feast, Yong Kai is worried that Gao Ding is actually going to murder him over this dinner. So he provides an excuse and refuses the invitation. Once the messenger comes back and hearing this, Gao Ding and E Huan are now super confident that Yong Kai is after their heads and decide that the best chance for them is to actually kill Yong Kai now and use his head as a present for Zhuge Liang when they decide to surrender to the Shu Han army. So they rallied up their entire camp and launched an attack on a very unprepared Yong Kai. And to make matters worse, many of Yong Kai's men already lost the will to fight after being captured and released that night by Zhuge Liang's men, as they now wanted to join Gao Ding as well and surrender to the Shu Han army. So without much effort, Yong Kai's camp was taken. And when Yong Kai tried to make a run for it, Le Huan stopped him in his track and cleaved his head right off. With Yong Kai's forces integrated, Gao Ding rode towards Shu Han's camp to offer his surrender. While Zhuge Liang accepted his surrender at first, once they entered the commander's tent, the guards quickly tied up Gao Ding. Confused, Gao Ding asks the prime minister what's going on. Zhuge Liang laughs and accuses Gao Ding of offering a false surrender because Zhu Bao had written a letter detailing that Gao Ding and Yong Kai are oath thorn brothers, so it would be impossible for them to kill each other, and when they kill each other, it must be a ploy to fake a surrender. Enraged, Gao Ding tells the prime minister that Zhu Bao is a complete liar, and that he and Yong Kai are not close, and this was a trick by Gao Ding to get him killed. Now, of course, Zhuge Liang knew this was all false, as after all, he had penned this letter personally in the first place. So he laughs and unties Gao Ding and tells him, If you can bring back Zhu Bao's head, then the surrender will be accepted. So without taking a break and still angry that Zhu Bao had also been writing secret letters to Zhuge Liang, Gao Ding and E Huan took their men straight for Zhu Bao's camp, who during this whole time was oblivious to what was happening that night. So seeing that Gao Ding approaches camp, he still thinks Gao Ding is his ally, so he rides out to greet him. But all that was waiting for him was the cold steel of E Huan's sky piercer as Zhu Bao fell without saying a word. Then Gao Ding informed the camp that they had already surrendered to Zhuge Liang, and that if you want to live, you should come join them too, or else you'll be killed on the spot. So, with all three forces from the three rebelling commanderies all reintegrated into the kingdom, all that remains are the rebel Nanman forces farther south. But before Zhuge Liang can head into the jungles to face off with Meng Huo, the army makes a pit stop at Yongchang to lift the siege that had been placed there, and also to meet the administrator Wang Kang, who did not surrender to the rebels in the first place and was the one who managed to pass a message to the capital to inform the prime minister of the rebellion. And after rewarding Wang Kang for his efforts, Zhuge Liang asked if there was any locals that he could recommend to them for the army as they would need some guides as they march farther south. And Wang Kang recommends Lu Kai, who had been a great help in arranging the defense of the city and an expert on the terrains in the south. To Zhuge Liang's surprise, Lu Kai was not only an expert to local terrain, he was also a map maker and had already made maps for most of the Nanman territories. So Zhuge Liang immediately took him in as the official guide to the army and they continue their march to meet their real foe in Meng Huo. So with this, we end our episode, and we'll come back next time with episode 3 titled, The First Encounter. So thank you guys again for watching, and see you all next time. Bye!